over the course of a few days, I'm going to be baking some bread, canning some soup, and making lots of meals for my family. So it is in the middle of winter. There's not much going on outside, but everyone still needs to eat, so there's lots to do inside. And I'm going to talk a little bit about rhythms and routines for stay-at-home moms and what a typical homeschool weekday looks like for us. So the first couple of days here are actually weekend days. So my husband is home, meaning, and we don't have school. Um, this means that I'm just not in as big of a hurry to get breakfast going and to get anything done, really. I can take my time. Even on Sundays, when we go to Mass, it's usually at 10.30 or 11, um, depending on where we go. So it's not super early and yeah, I can take my time, so it's kind of nice. So this was a Saturday morning, and took my time getting ready, got some stuff done, and now I'm going to start a batch of sourdough bread. I am experimenting a little bit today with something new. I'm going to make an artisan loaf that is half whole wheat and half all purpose. So I have made all einkorn artisan loaves. In fact, when I started with sourdough baking, um, the first artisan loaf I ever made was all einkorn. And that is the most difficult flour to bake with, in my opinion. And you know, when you're using ancient cranes like einkorn, there's really no way around it you're just not going to get the same texture um, or flavor in your final product. It's going to be a more dense, chewy loaf, but it's a lot healthier. But anyway, just experimenting today. So if you've watched my previous videos on making artisan bread, it's really easy. It's just uh, sourdough starter, flour, water, salt. I did add some avocado oil in here to soften this bread up because anytime you know you use whole wheat or anything like that um yeah you're gonna you're just not gonna have as soft of a loaf as if you were using all-purpose or bread flour so i added a little avocado oil we'll see how this turns out this is an experimental loaf like i said so um no exact recipe yet if i like it i'll keep it um if i need to make any changes then i will i will modify it and then get that recipe up on the blog. But moving right along, I thought this would be a good project for a Saturday. I'm going to can some soup. So last night, I, um, yeah, yesterday would have been Friday, so I had a whole chicken carcass that I stuck in the Instant Pot and did bone broth overnight. I'm just straining that. I'm going to use that as the base of my soup. Now this soup, I'm going to be canning in pint jars, um, getting kind of close to the baby, kind of close to baby time. I've got a few weeks yet, but it's just time to start thinking about that. So I'm um, going to can this soup for me. This will be part of my postpartum meal plan. And I'll talk to you a little more about that in a minute. Right now I'm just feeding my starter. You saw that when I emptied my starter out, I, I put it in a new jar. I just put the, like a tablespoon or so, into a new clean jar, fed it a little bit of all purpose, a little bit of rye flour, some water. And this is a thinner starter than usual, but that's okay because my starter is really strong. So um, if you have a brand new sourdough starter, go watch my videos. I will link them for you. The ultimate guide to sourdough starters. So I've got two of them. I've got a lot of videos <laughs> on sourdough starters, but these two particularly are just very helpful. Lots of tips. Um, but when you're just getting started with sourdough, you want your starter to be really thick. So this dough looks really good. This, this is like half wheat, not whole wheat. It's half wheat because it's half whole wheat and half all purpose. <laughs> Um, earlier this morning before I had the camera on when it was bright and early and still dark outside, I started these buns 
because I thought we were going to have breakfast sandwiches. Um, that was that was one of the requests for breakfast on this particular morning, and I, I didn't have any buns. So these are just yeast buns. It's a very simple recipe. I'll put this in the description of this video for you. Anyway, we ended up having something else for breakfast, but that's okay because now I have these buns and I will bake them and store them and then I'll use them some other time for burgers or something. Or maybe tomorrow we'll have breakfast sandwiches. Um, we just got a bunch of pork processed, so that I think that was the request for sausage egg and cheese sandwiches I don't remember it's hard for me to keep track I have lots of requests coming in all the time but this is a really good look how pretty these are this is a really good quick um, yeast bun recipe if you need a recipe that can be finished in like under an hour now there are children running around all around me so even though I can angle the camera and edit the video to make it look like this is just a very quiet morning, it's not. Um, it, it never is because I have kids, so common sense will tell you that. If you have children, your home is probably not quiet ever, um, very rarely. But that's a good thing. That's one of the great things about having children is they're funny, funny little people. As you can see, I have a little person, little fingers off to the side pointing at everything I'm doing right now. So this dough looks really good, but I I just got carried away. Um, and it's a large volume of dough for an artisan loaf, so that's okay. I've got a really big bread basket. It's um, like an oblong bread basket, there it is. So, and then I've got a really big Dutch oven that I can bake a big loaf in. So I'll just do that, that'll be just fine. But um, I, I just, you know, it was kind of in the middle. If I would have cut this ball of dough in half and made two round artisan loaves, I think they would have been really small. So I just went ahead and did one big loaf. But like I said, if I like the general recipe, I will just modify the amounts and everything, make it again for a trial and post it on the blog. So I have it, this loaf shaped, going to let it cold proof in the fridge probably overnight. I'm in no rush. Like I said, this is just... Saturday, we don't have anything going on, so I'm just doing some projects while I can. Now I am preparing the soup that I'm going to pressure can. So I did brown some ground beef. I don't really have a recipe. I just had a bunch of stuff in the fridge that I wanted to use. And soup is one of those things that is, if you season it really well, then it's going to be fine. It's going to be good um, if you want soup. I My husband doesn't like soup. He, he likes like stew or like a really thick really cheesy soup but not like a brothy soup but this is pretty much all I can eat postpartum well I'm not sure at least about this postpartum experience but um, I've had four children so far and two out of four of those times I've gotten very very sick with postpartum thyroiditis and one of the main symptoms um, so, you know, when your thyroid stops working, then your metabolism slows down to almost nothing and you're, you have no energy and you can't digest anything. So I end up with like gastritis. I can't keep anything down. It's very painful. It's very unpleasant. And I'm just preparing this time because I don't, I don't know. I've, I've tried everything. I, I've looked into this. Um, you know, I did find one potential link and that is selenium deficiency. So that is something new that I'm trying this pregnancy as I am supplementing with selenium. I don't know if that's going to make a difference. I just don't know, but I know the baby is worth it. Um, and you know, it's, it la for me, it lasts like three to six months. So <laughs> it's a short time for a new baby that we'll get to keep forever. Um, well, you know, we'll get to keep for as long as the Lord wills, I should say. But anyway, I need to get prepared with food that I can actually tolerate. So 
coming up here soon, I will do a big video on meal prep for my family where I prepare meals for them, but I won't get to eat any of them. I will have to eat soup, which is fine because I'm making really good flavorful soup that I like. So like I said, no recipe here. I just know that since this soup has bone broth and meat, has ground beef, um, and veggies, I need to can, and I'm canning in pint jars, so I'm going to need to pressure can it um, for 75 minutes. Yeah, that's what I'll go with. So if that upsets you because I'm not using, um, you know, an approved canning recipe, well, I'm sorry. Don't ever look up Amish canning because then you'll be really upset because they don't use approved recipes ever <laughs> so this is just what I'm doing so I do have really detailed canning tutorials as well for water bath canning and pressure canning I will link those for you guys I know I'm just talking I'm not walking you through all the steps but like I said I have the tutorials and these tutorials were some of the first videos I ever made so they were way they're really long and I I talked more than I talk now which is a lot, but people said they were helpful. Um, I, I like to, when I'm doing a tutorial, I really like to walk people through assuming they know nothing and make it, you know, good for beginners because that's how I like to learn. When I'm learning something new, I don't like when people assume that I know things and then it makes me feel stupid for not knowing the basic things. I would rather somebody just talk to me like I'm five years old and break it down step by step so I know exactly what I'm doing. And that is what I do in my canning tutorials. But anyway, there, there is a difference between water bath canning, which is basically just submerging um, jars in boiling water for a set period of time to seal them, and then pressure canning, which you need a pressure canner for. You cannot use an instant pot. So... Um, when you are canning anything, it's important to keep everything hot because when glass changes temperature, it can bust. I, I've experienced it. Just take my word for it. So that's why you saw me a while back preheating my jars and I'm working very quickly, filling my jars with hot soup, cleaning the rims with, I clean them with a little bit of vinegar. Um, that's a trick that I learned from you guys here. That's one reason I like making these YouTube videos is you, you always chime in and give me good tips on different things. Um, so I, I cleaned the rims with vinegar and then dried them and then put my lids and rings on, fastened them fingertip tight. Here's another tip I learned from you guys. It's to add a little bit of vinegar to my pressure canner uh, because we have hard water and then my jars will come out clean. And it does work. You'll see when I take these out, they're clean. I tried it out one of the last times that I was canning something and was very pleased that it did in fact work. So this is a huge canner. I forget, maybe like 23 quarts. I can't ever remember how many quarts, but I think you can can 20 pints in this one canner because it's a double decker. So you can do two, two layers of pints. And I actually have two of these canners. So if I wanted to, I could have gotten my bit, made a huge five gallon stock pot of soup and canned all of that in my two pressure canners at once. So that would have been 40 pints of soup, but I didn't. This is just 16 pints because that's, that's just what I had on hand today. But maybe we'll do that coming up as part of like a postpartum meal prep because I'm going to need more soup. Like I told you guys, that's pretty much all I can eat postpartum. So what's 40 cans of soup? I'm going to need a lot more than that. Um, I know I could buy it, but I don't want to buy it. <laughs> I don't want to eat canned soup from the store and it's super expensive if you want to buy quality stuff whereas this is cheap I'm using stuff that I already have so um, my pints are finishing up here and I'm talking and distracted don't don't can distract it or you'll do what I did which I just got I had gotten a face full of steam and that is not pleasant so I'm just gonna take these jars out and let them set overnight on the counter you do not want to mess with your jars when they are fresh 
out of the canner um, because you know you'll see you can actually see that the liquid is still boiling so you know the sealing process this is this is part of the process letting them cool is part of processing food when you're canning so yeah just don't mess with them just set them to the side there's no rush all right let's fast forward to the next morning in my pajamas just going to preheat a dutch oven because i've got this dough that we started yesterday that half wheat loaf experimental loaf right so i want to bake that this morning and as you see my jars are cool I store mine without the rings. That's the best way to store them. You can see I've got good seals here. You want to store without the rings because that way you will know um, if you have a bad seal. And I actually did have one jar out of this batch that when I tested it, the seal was bad. It was, it was not a good seal. And I can't remember the last time that's happened to me, but that's fine. I had actually made like two batches of this soup, one to keep for this week and um, one to can so I just added that one that didn't seal to the batch in the fridge that that I made to keep for this week so it all worked out just fine but I ended up with 15 pints of soup that will be 15 meals for me once I have this baby all right now I am getting this loaf ready to bake so I just turned it out onto some parchment paper um, you guys have done this with me before. If you're not brand new to sourdough, then you know all about the process. The dough is holding its shape really well. So, so far so good on this experimental loaf. I'm just going to give it a big expansion score. Do an S for my name, my initials, and my sourdough there. One of these days, I will get a little fancier with my scoring. I really like watching videos of people who are very very good at scoring and doing just like beautiful designs but I've tried it and mine never turns out like theirs so I just stick with my plain scores and it all tastes the same so I am going to be baking this at the same temperature that I always bake 425 that's my baking temperature um, I'm in the Midwest if you're up in the mountains or you're at a different altitude, then you'll need to adjust. You know, that's one of the things with sourdough. You really do need to make adjustments depending on your elevation, depending on your oven, your home. Uh, there's a lot of variables. So I feel like, you know, a lot of sourdough people on the Internet, they just post their exact recipe exact temperature and baking time and say this is going to be the perfect recipe for everybody well that's just not true so anyway if you want to read my blog post all about the variables in baking artists like simplifying artisan bread I will link that as well so I'm going to take a picture of these buns I don't know if I'll put them on the blog but a lot of times I just do this I it takes like less than two minutes for me to take a picture of something I've already got my camera out and then if I want to put that recipe on my blog I can but a lot of times I decide not to and it's strictly because I don't have time to put all of my recipes on the blog so I ended up baking this loaf covered for 35 minutes now my usual my standard round artisan loaf that's a little bit smaller I only bake it covered for 30 minutes and then uncovered for like 8 to 10 but this is bigger a bigger loaf so I baked it longer covered and then uncovered for 10 and look at that it's really pretty um, it's got a good shape like I said it, it held its shape so now I just have to let it cool I'll, I'm gonna let it cool all day I don't need this loaf um, so I'll probably cut into it tomorrow and see what the crumb looks like so we're gonna fast forward to evening here just preparing for the next day because this was Sunday and that means tomorrow's Monday and Monday is a school day so tomorrow morning starting tomorrow morning I will walk you through just what um, you know an average school day looks like an average day being a stay-at-home mom homeschooling 
making all of the meals and talk you through that. Um, part of starting the day right is doing a little prep work at night, which is something I don't like to do. I don't even like being awake past, like, okay, the kids' bed 30s, It the bed is, the kid, oh, wow. I can't talk right now because it's past my bedtime right now when I'm doing this recording. Kids' bedtime is at 8.30. I like to be in bed by like 8.31, but preparing the night before really is worthwhile. Okay, so now we have fast forwarded to the next morning. It is Monday morning, bright and early. It is still dark out, but I get up early to get a head start on the day so that I don't feel like I'm playing catch up all day. That is the absolute worst. Um, we'll talk more about that in a minute here. But anyway, I one of the first things I do after I get dressed and you know, I do have the toddler, so he doesn't sleep in. My big kids do sleep in. And that's just the way it goes. Babies and toddlers are usually early risers. Big kids are not, and that's fine. <laughs> um, so little ones just tag along early in the morning. You know, when I say that I have morning quiet time, there he's there, you know, so it's not totally quiet. But one of the things that I do right away, like during the school week, is get breakfast going. That way, I'm I'm not playing catch up. I'm one stead, step ahead of the kids. And you can really tell it's past my bedtime when I'm recording this because I, I just keep stumbling over my words. I had half of a cinnamon raisin artisan loaf that I needed to use. It was really dry um, and kind of like had maybe one more day. So I decided to make French toast casserole. And that is one of my favorite ways to use um, sourdough bread that is kind of past its prime. So I just cubed up that bread and you can use any kind of bread. Um, I've used like my sandwich loaf, but like I said, this is artisan bread and it works great. And I just mixed up some eggs, milk, brown sugar, um, cinnamon, vanilla extract. You can get creative here. Like you don't have to do cinnamon raisin. You can do whatever you want. I've done my blueberry lemon loaf in French toast casserole, that is really good too. So I just poured the egg mixture over the breadcrumbs. This is a nine by nine dish. So if I had a whole artisan loaf, I would have used a nine by 12. And going to put that in the fridge. Um, if I was really on top of it, I could have prepared that last night and just let it sit in the fridge overnight. Like overnight French toast casserole. You've probably done that before. Maybe you've done that before. And then baked it in the morning, but I wasn't. Anyway, it's early enough that I can let that set in the fridge and really let that milk like soak into the bread for about an hour before baking, drink my coffee, and get the kids' school stuff out. That way we're just prepared for the day. I, I get as much finished as I can in these early morning hours before everybody is awake. This is such a valuable time. The more children you have, like, you know, you, I remember the first time that I read uh, Proverbs 31 and it was talking about the Proverbs 31 woman rising while it was still dark to prepare food for her maidens. Well, I don't have maidens and hired help, but I have mouths to feed. So it made sense to me. And back at that time, I was actually not doing that. I was letting the kids wake me up. Like my alarm clock was my children and it just felt chaotic all day. Like I was one step behind and I hate that feeling. Everybody's crabby. I'm crabby. So now I'm a morning person. I just make myself do it. I get up, I get started, um, get their school stuff prepared. And you can see on there's a little one who's about ready to walk out of the hallway behind me. On this particular day, pretty early in the morning, things went south because he walked out and told me that one of the kids was sick. And there was a mess to clean up in the bedrooms. <sighs> so that's why my hair looks like it does. Because I actually, obviously, turned the camera off, went and did that. Now I'm just now getting back out here. You can see that the sun is coming out. And talk about being glad that I had gotten up and gotten started on my day. Because I didn't expect that. But that's life. And that is what happened. So that's what we're going with today. Just going to pick up where I left off. And when I'm pregnant, I am try to be extra disciplined with taking my supplements. 
because it's important. Especially, I, I told you guys earlier in this video, I'm taking selenium and iodine to try to take care of my thyroid, so I can't miss that one. So, you know, trying to stay on top of the meals for the kids and taking care of them, but I have to uh, take care of me and the baby too. And the tea that I prepared last night before bed, I'm going to go ahead and strain that. This is actually an infusion. So this is Nora tea or a Nora infusion. Nora stands for nettle, oat straw, uh, red raspberry, and alfalfa. So it's just a mixture of those herbs that is really, really good for pregnancy and postpartum. Highly nutritive and uh, can decrease risk of postpartum hemorrhage and lots of stuff like that. So I try to drink a quart of this a day and I just brew it in a big gallon jar like you saw there. I'll link the recipe for you guys. I have an Instagram post that I think is pretty detailed on that. But anyway, so after the little detour of having a sick child, cleaning up, getting back to my to-do list, which means it's Monday and I don't know, I had some phone call to make. I think I actually had to call the bank for something. So I'm like just getting on my to-do list right away while I'm cooking, multitasking here. Um, you know, that's another way that I try to get things done and stay organized is I make a daily to-do list. I don't like micromanaging myself out like two to three, four weeks in advance. Uh, I don't stick to it. Things just change too much when you have a lot of kids. But I can stick to a daily to-do list. So that's what I do. And I you've talked, my sister is a stay-at-home mom too, and she says the same thing. Uh, the daily to-do list works really, really well for her. And I actually wrote a whole blog post on this, like on stay-at-home mom routines when you're not super type A, but you want to be productive and get stuff done. So I'll link that blog post, but it talks about to-do lists and just different parts of the day. So let's cut into this loaf that we, it's been cooling for over 24 hours. You know, it could, it could have been better. This is the crumb and it's slightly overproofed. This is what a, an overproofed crumb looks like. It's really, really soft. Um, the, the bread was really soft. So see how it was more dense at the bottom? Yeah, it's just a little bit overproofed, but it was fine. There's nothing wrong with this loaf. I definitely will adjust the proportion, so I'm not going to put this recipe on the blog or anything. Maybe next week I'll have it ready. Um, but when you have a loaf that's just not perfect, don't throw it away. <laughs> Make French toast casserole or do what I'm doing now. I'm making grilled cheese. Um, overproofed bread look, works really, really good for grilled cheese. And I was really glad I made that soup uh, over the weekend, that extra soup, because like I said, sick kid, it was just easy. It was ready. I had the loaf of bread. So I'm not always a step ahead, but sometimes I am. And when I am, I'm very glad that that I was. So if I had a tip for you that I I have to remind myself of often as well, it is stay one step ahead with meals. Always have something that you can throw together quickly. All right. So one of my favorite things to drink when I'm pregnant is lemon water. I don't know why I just drink more. Well, I kind of do know why. I know the science behind it. I just don't feel like talking about all that today. But um, it's very hydrating. Lemon water with like a little dash of salt. And that big jar is actually full of salt. I just had that out because I had to refill my salt container. So um, middle of the day after lunch was just taking some more of my supplements. That was magnesium beef liver and mushroom. And then um, after lunch is nap time and nap time is when I get other stuff done. So like maybe I work on my blog or right now I was actually doing some planning for um, next school year for the kids. So anything that I need to sit down and do and have quite a bit of quiet time, I try to do that during nap time because my older kids are old enough they should like like they know what it means to have quiet time. They don't always listen, but um, they know what that means, and they know they should, and it, it works out pretty well most time, most of the time. So we're gonna fast forward here. After nap time, I actually have quite a bit of downtime. My husband gets home from work um, at a pretty decent hour, and he takes the boys out, and they do a lot of the chores around the farm. And yeah, I just have downtime. So 
if I haven't started dinner already, then I get dinner going and that's what I'm doing now. Now this day, like I said, it was just a little bit chaotic and not like I planned because I, I did have a sick child that I, I just wasn't expecting that. You never are expecting it, right? But um, I decided to make something very quick, a one pot meal. I'm making like a one pot 30 minute meal. This is um, hamburger helper, but not the boxed kind. So my version of hamburger helper, mostly from scratch. I mean, the beef and the bone broth was, from, was mine. I made that. I didn't make the tomato sauce or the pasta, but that's okay. So it's just, it's really easy. I, I need to put all these recipes in the description for you guys, but this was just two pounds of ground beef and then 10 ounces of dried pasta, just whatever pasta you want to use. I'm using bow tie pasta and then a quart of bone broth. You can use chicken or beef. I had chicken, so that's what I used. And then a quart, well, not quite a quart because I don't know, just a little less than a quart. Um, I used a jar of tomato sauce or pasta sauce. That's what I was looking for. I used a jar of pasta sauce um, from the store. So a little bit less than a quart jar of pasta sauce some seasonings, salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, um, Italian seasoning, and then I added two cups of cheese. Yes, that's a lot, of, a lot of cheese, but that is what my family likes, so that's what I did. And like I said, this was just quick and easy, and it was the perfect meal for tonight. All right, well, thank you guys for watching again this week. I will be back next week. And all of the recipes that I talked about in this video and the blog post about stay-at-home mom routines will be linked in the description.